Scott calling. Are you? I'm listening. Someone asked me uh, what this is. This is a tomato juice <laughs> container. <laughs> no, it's not brand placement in some movie or advertisement. It's just a used tomato juice container that I use for water. And it reminds me to drink and to get enough fluid in to replenish, you know, my body's need. Because for me, because I was a Crohn's disease um, survivor, you could say, Although a lot of people now survive no problem because they've come up with all kinds of new drugs and everything else and figured out and done their thing. And when I was around, it nearly killed me. <laughs> but because of the surgeries I've had, it's easy for me to get dehydrated. So I used to spend lots of summers in the hospitals just even after I had no problem with Crohn's. I used to lay in hospital beds in the summer getting fluids about, oh, I don't know, every two or three weeks because... I'd get dehydrated, kind of like what you see on the um, athletes who do decathlons or triathlons or all these different sporting events. When they get done, you know, they really do hydrate themselves, sometimes with IVs. You know, they do intravenous uh, supplementation of fluid. And, you know, it's interesting about that because the reality is is that when you're in a trial or a tribulation when you find yourself in circumstances that you know stretch you or strain you then you need likewise fluid you know and the bible is called the water of the word and jesus is called the word of god so you need jesus <laughs> so the only thing i can tell you is if you really want to be prepared for your daily existence throughout the rest of your life, whatever it may be, whether long or short or tall or square or dumb or religious or not, then you need sustenance. You have to replace fluids. You have to take in a certain amount of what the body needs in order to survive. Because if you don't, you might get by, but you won't be equipped. You won't be prepared. And that's why having a devotional time or a Bible study time or a time besides going to church on Sundays or whichever day of the week you go, if you go, it's important for you to also have a daily devotion, a daily, I say, emotion, because I like to involve my emotions in it. And it's also part of what we do here is that we present the idea that, you know, technology is beneficial and that we can use it as an emotional to express what God is doing in our lives to each other so we can say, aha, see, it's not all bad Christian television. <laughs> now it's bad internet Christian television. <laughs> or bad videos. Oh no, I'm being invaded by bad Christian videos. But seriously, the joy that we can participate in is one of just being honest and real about when we have a need that we want to call out to God and that we want to cry out to Jesus and to find that not only do we call out but we get a response back and that's what I say about evotional is the whole idea and knowledge that Jesus is here inside us he's living within us the kingdom of God is about us why are we acting like there is no God, there is no living Jesus, there is no living Word, there is no Word of God, that we have to be so bummed down and blown out by the things that happen to us? We don't. <laughs> and I'm a prime example. <laughs> the reality is, is that God will meet you every day if you're willing to take the time to meet Him. It doesn't matter if it's morning, it doesn't matter if it's noon, it doesn't matter if it's night. But if you spend your time at some point in time and take the time to be with the Lord Jesus, then he will show you, as he promised, that if you trust in him with all your heart, that you don't lean into your own understanding. If in all your ways you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. And the reason why we need that direction is because we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. He does. Wouldn't it be nice to know? 
I think so. That's why I ask him. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to do today? <laughs> I don't do that until... I do that before I get out of bed. I don't know about you. From God Calling, understand them. Take joy wherever you go. You've been much blessed. You are being much blessed. Such stores of blessing are waiting you in the months and years that lie ahead. Pass every blessing on. Whoops, I knew that sounded familiar. I was going, that sounds very familiar. Have I read that? I have read that. So let's read the one that's for today. <laughs> Attack fear. Oh, that sounds so much better. <laughs> In devotionals, you know, one of the things I like about this is that, you know, I shared with every chance I get that this isn't about necessarily people watching, but for people to keep me reading my devotionals because I have eight of them that I used to read and I read them every day and then when I stopped reading them, the Lord said, hey, why don't you, you know, like start this devotional thing and, you know, people can hold you accountable. And I went, well, you know, because I was already doing all these postings and blogs and writing and constantly, you know, busy. Then I thought, uh, Lord, I don't have time. But how many of you <laughs> have told God that you don't have time for them? <laughs> Maybe it works for you, but God tends to talk back to me when I say things like that. So part of devotional was to have someone else hold me accountable so they could see if I've read my devotionals. And then, uh, likewise, I would be changed by them as people might be watching them and they might get a enjoyment out of watching me squirm as God works in my life and I'm kind of beaving and wobbing and dodging and dipping and trying to get out from under, you know, what he might be saying to me. But at the same time, God didn't want it to be so professional or so organized that mistakes aren't made or that, you know, things don't get... <laughs> discombobulated <laughs> like especially on my porch it gets hot it gets cold it's gonna rain it it has already rained in the middle of summer of all things and so I would share that and be real with it because after all doesn't God see you right where you're at doesn't he already know what you know about yourself or you might not realize I think so so attack fear I learned daily the sublime lesson of trust and calm in the midst of storm. Whatever of sorrow or difficulty the day may bring, my tender command to you is still the same, to love and to laugh and to enjoy what I have provided. Love and laughter is not a sorrowful resignation, but it marks real acceptance of my will. I, you know, take it with a grain of salt on the laughter part. I know there are people that get a little carried away. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. Okay, maybe I get carried away about enjoying myself, but I don't get carried away about rolling on the floor laughing. Leave every soul the braver and happier for having met you. For children or youth, middle or old age, for sorrow, for sin, for all you may encounter in others, this should be your attitude. Learn to love and learn to laugh and learn to lead them to a place to enjoy. Do not fear. Remember how I faced the devil in the wilderness and how I conquered with the sword of the spirit which is the word of God you too have your quick answer for every fear that evil may present an answer of faith an answer of confidence confidence in me where possible say it aloud the spoken word does have power but don't abuse it only use it in the sense that I am present Look on every fear, not as a weakness on your part, due to illness or worry, but as a very real temptation to be attacked and overthrown. You know, there's a interesting thing that happened to me was that before I was saved, I used to have these nightmares. I mean, my gosh, I remember them very vividly. I used to watch things like Twilight Zone when it was black and white. <laughs> And I'd be terrified of these little guys that were going to go marching around, you know, and shoot me, like, you know, with little needles and stuff. And I used to have dreams of, you know, these eyes on the wall or something, you know, and they were reoccurring nightmares, which was interesting because they reoccurred over and over and over again. But the funny thing is, is that when I got saved, I had no more nightmares. As a matter of fact, after a few years, I was pretty fearless. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing to me. 
I was just as dumbfounded one day when I woke up and said, I don't know what I'm afraid of, you know? Now, I have an avoidance of things like, okay, if I'm 3,000 feet up and looking straight down, for some reason I have this, I guess they call it agoraphobia, where I feel like I'm going to jump over, and, you know, fall down, all the way down. But that's just normal. You know, and I'm talking about fear of things that we shouldn't fear. I don't fear death, do you? Why? We're just going to close our eyes and wake up and be with the Lord. I'm not fearful of particularly suffering because I've been there. <laughs> I don't like it, I don't want it, and I don't do it anymore. You know, I just noticed that when I was laughing, I'm shaking the camera. I may have to change things a little bit. But praise the Lord, you know, when God wants to bless you, you know, he wants you to know that you can trust him in all of your ways. That you can trust him not just with your heart, but with your children, with your life, with your finances, with your personal relationships. With every anxiety or fear or worry or care that you have. The idea of trust isn't one of just saying, oh, well, you know, I'll let it go. No, it's sitting down and talking to God about it and having a real conversation. Isn't it time that you did that today? had a real conversation with God? Try it. it. just might surprise you. He may answer. 